Good day to you. Good to be with you. We are going to look at something that I've been thinking about and talking to different people about just around town in the last few days. And that's a term that I heard used a lot um, some, <laughs> some almost 50 years ago when I became a Christian. And that was the term that uh, the New Testament Christianity and the New Testament church. Uh, I don't hear that much anymore, but I hear it some. I even say, it. you know, we want to be the New Testament church. We want to be, you know, we want to be the, the Christians of the New Testament, New Testament Christians. And a lot of people look at me like, what are you talking about? Because I know what I mean, but they don't. <laughs> that happened so much. Because, you know, when we look at today in Christianity, uh, we think there's a lot of different types of Christianity. And there are. There are Christians that are Christians of habit. There are Christians that are Christian because their family was Christians. There's uh, Christians that basically you don't understand. They want something new. And, uh, you know, what is old? What is new? When my mother passed away a few years back, uh, we met there in Oklahoma and some of us came from different places and we met and, uh, and, and had, had a funeral. We asked a local preacher there in our hometown and I didn't know him. He had just been there a little while from Arizona. And uh, he came in, I said, uh, before you leave the, the, the short lesson there at the funeral home, I said, Could, do you mind uh, s singing one of my mama's favorite songs? He said, yes, if I know it. I said, oh, you know it, it's a, you know, precious memory. <laughs> and everybody around me said, oh yes, yes, we know that. And, and the, the preacher looked at me and he said, what? I said, precious memory. I said, here it is. He said, that's new to me. Now, those of us from Texas and Kansas and, and Arkansas and Oklahoma that was there, we said, what? <laughs> but he said, I don't know it. It's new to me. And, and I think about that and, and I see that when I say New Testament Christianity, it's new to a lot of people. When I say that we can go back to just what the New Testament teaches and follow the New Testament, sometimes it's, it's kind of new to people. Because we think almost like, uh, we think of, the, of, of the, the New Testament almost like the laws of our land. Some of us that are different ages, we can remember the speed limit being changed once, changed again, and changed again from one place to another. You know, I can remember when all the speed limits on the interstates were 70. Then all of a sudden it came a time that no matter where you was, any kind, 55 was the limit. And then there was a, used to be a time there was a daylight and a, a nighttime and, and all of these are different, but we have changed. But when it comes to the Word of God, a lot of people want to change it too. They've said, well, it was wrong then, but it's, not, it's, it's okay now. And we do, every generation, we do have our favorite sins. Uh, I'm going to say that favorite sins because... You know, uh, sins are all sins are sins, and I think equally in the sense there's no one of them that's going to keep you out of heaven any more than the other. But you know, there was there was a a time when if someone you know if they drunk even got drunk, it wasn't that much of a sin. Then it was a big sin. Now again, I don't know if it is or not. Now talking to people, but the thing about it is, the Bible has always said that drunkenness is wrong. Drunkenness is wrong. Lying has always been wrong, and we can see different things in, in the Bible. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have been passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is, 
what we do realize the gospel listen to me the gospel is to change us now some of us have been or was practicing proper Christianity practice in the sense of what we was not doing or doing before we became a Christian a good moral person can maybe a good moral person to be lost because just because you don't steal or cheat or lie don't mean that you are a Christian you are a Christian when you come inside of Christ and you change your ways and you become righteous now I would say this when I say that you become a New Testament Christian I'm not saying that you become a New Testament person uh, you know there are people that think well you need to dress like Christ you want they want us to put sandals on and and you know put the cloth on and all that but that's not what we are talking about the New Testament Christians the Christianity of the new of the first century and the second century and the 12th century and the 14th century they all dress different matter of fact we dress different now than we did when I was young but the thing about it is Christianity changes us to, from the inside of who we are not what we wear and how we talk or how we get from one point to a, another I know there is a religion or a couple of religion that you can go across the United States or the world and you will meet them and they will be in a, in a wagon and they will have the black hats and they will have all of this one of them don't even have buttons on their clothes because they they have a hook and eye. <laughs> Somebody said, well, why? Well, they do that because, and I'll be honest with you, they go back to a certain time. You know, buttons wasn't used at the time of Columbus. I tell people that, and they say, what? No, buttons wasn't used up to the seventh, I think the 17th, 18th century before buttons was used. They used hook as an eye or they tie their underwear up with a string. <laughs> They didn't use that. But the thing about it is, we, we have to watch each and every one of us. And I'm going to pick a little bit on because we would like to, I would like to, and some of the members here would like to redecorate this building. One young man came in. He said, we asked him, so what do you think of the building and the way it looks? He said, well, it looks, it reminds me when I come in is of a funeral home. And I asked a band that had came and held a meeting here, and he said, well, I, I tell you, it reminds me of a 1960 church building. Well, it is decorated. It's, it's built. It's been paid. Everything like when it was built in 1967 hadn't changed. I'm not saying it's wrong. But the thing about it is, we know that the buildings that are built from one time or the other and the society, we can change. But the thing that we need to remember what is said from this pulpit about the Word of God and the Christian mind and the Christian heart and the Christian conduct and the Christian responsibility cannot change every 20 years or every 200 years or 2,000 years. It must stay in God's Word. We are to go to the New Testament to see how we are to be in our Christian life today. Today. Today we have to, when When Paul told Timothy in 2 and 15, he also told you and I, because we are to read this and we are to go by. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needest not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word of truth is divided. We, the word of God, somebody said the word of God is as simple as math. And I'm not talking about new modern math and all that. I'm talking about the old timey math of two plus two is seven and a half. No, no, wait a minute. No, some of you said, no, no. Two plus two today is what? Four. 20 years ago, two plus two was what? Four. 2,000 years ago, two plus two was what? Four. So it is with the word of God. 
When the word of God and we look and see that we come into Jesus Christ, we come into Jesus and because of Christ we are saved and that's still the same as it was then. Unless you believe, you shall likewise what? Perish. That was true then, it's true today. Matter of fact, John, in John chapter 20, verse 30, 31, John 20, Gospel of John, says these things, that, you know, these things are written so that thou might what? That thou might believe. There was other things written, he said, that would fill the world with the books, but these things are written. We have what we need. We have what we need. The, the Bible doesn't go into details of how, what kind of clothes we have to have on. I would, I would hate to give up, you know, some of my good cotton and my, my slick and comfortable clothes to, to go around in wool and camera hair and some of the other things. I wouldn't like to dress that way, and I don't want to, but I don't have to. Because Christianity, oh, and I know, hey, some of you, well, you have to dress decent and, and, and not be immodest. I agree. But you can be dressed properly if it's in wool, rags, toe sacks, or whatever. It don't matter. As long as we practice, yes, modesty, as we be decent, as we talk, uh, Paul said that basically in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 9 and 22, he said, Paul, 2 Corinthians 9 and 22, Paul said, you know, I do, I become all things to all men so that I might save some. And and I, I look at that and I uh, I see that. Uh, I was raised uh, out west, but didn't wear a cowboy hat, really. It wasn't something I'd done. Then I started preaching the first place out at Sublette, Kansas. Out at Sublette, Kansas, it was in the feed of the cattle country. I mean, southwest Kansas, there was people there. And so somebody gave me a, a cowboy hat. I was told, and they knew it, that a doctor told me in the winter I was having trouble with my throat, and finally the doctor said, can't you wear a hat? I said, why? He said, I, I would see you a third less or, or half less for your throat if you kept a hat on, keep your head warm. So somebody gave me a cowboy hat. If well, that was a time in the 70s when the feedlot, a lot of people had cattle and food, and everything came in there. And I walked in one time, and the market had just crashed. And I came in, my cowboy hat on, I walked in to the cafe at the table there. We called it Table of Knowledge, and I would go in a couple of times. And I walked in, and the, and the guys looked at me, and they said, Carter, are you in the cattle business? I said, I sure am, I bought some. And they just kind of went like that, like I was, you could just see on their face, stupid guy. The market was, they said, you did what? I said, I, I, bought, I bought into the beef business. I, Lord, I can't believe that. I said, well, I did, I bought two pounds of hamburger meat. And they all laughed. See, because I had the hat, they consumed, you know, and, and I did, and, and yes, I did a lot, got into a lot of cattle work, and wore a hat a lot, and, and by the way, having a hat, if it was a Russian little hat in the snow, or a cowboy hat, did you know I went to the doctor a lot less, and it paid off. But the thing about it is, I live down here in Florida now, I have a Stetson over there in my office. I wore it one day in the last 10 years. Why? Because if I wear it, people look at me and they see the hat, they don't see me. And I don't think that's modesty. I don't want them, you know, I don't want to bring. So I don't do that. But the thing about it is the Word of God is something that we, that is written so that we might follow it. In, am I a New Testament Christian? The, the way to answer that is 
the way the answer at the New Testament makes me a Christian. Does that make sense? The New Testament makes me a Christian. The New Testament makes you a Christian. You can have a creed book, the teachings of man, and you can have all of this. But the only way that you are going to become a Christian is by looking at this book, not something else. Matter of fact, I, 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 and we must look at it, we must study it as we saw in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. And then I want you to look at James. The little book of James, there in James 1, 22 through 25, I'd like to read. James there, James 1, 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word. And by the way, the word is talking about the Bible, God's word. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. And for the occasion himself, he goeth away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. That man will be blessed in what he does. I like to tell this because I didn't fully understand this. I read it in college and preached for, for years. And then I went for five years and was a chaplain in the Texas prison system. Part of my responsibility, I went in there five days a week, sometimes six, and I spent time visiting. And I had to, one thing that I was expected to do when my turn to do it was to go to, to the lockup. I know that sounds funny, but in the prison, there's a jail in the prison where you, they get into trouble, they take them out of general population and they put them in lockup. They call it jail. I would too. That's what it is. I went to see some of the men that was there talking to him. One I seen, and and I talked to him. Do you want anything? Do you like something to read? They wasn't able to get out and come to any Bible service or classes while they was in there. And uh, I looked and I saw on on his cell over there there was a a drawing of outline kind of of a man, and it kind of looked like him, but the drawing was not done. This this drawing, and I looked over there and I said, James. What's that drawing of? He said, of me. I said, oh. I said, well, you got plenty of time in here to finish it, I guess, kind of being light with him. He said, I can't finish it in here. I said, you don't have a pencil or what? He said, no, I got a pencil, but I can't finish it. I said, why? He said, I don't have a mirror. I said, what? He said, chaplain, I don't remember what I looked like just to finish it up. I, what I've been doing is looking in the mirror, then drawing it. I said, what? I couldn't understand that. But that's what he was saying, that we realize that we have to keep looking at the Word of God or we may forget what we should look like. Does that make sense? We have to keep looking at the Word of God or we may forget what we do look like. The New Testament Christianity realize what it is and who we should be. Now, I would say this. In Romans chapter 6, we can see and we get back to what it is. It's to make us to look at Christ so that we can look like him. In Romans chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, it says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in newness of life. That is, we should do and walk a certain way. Why? Because we have became, or do become, a New Testament Christian through Christ. And then, of course, in verse 5, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Being a New Testament Christianity is knowing that we are dead to self, alive in Christ, and shall be, shall be alive 
with him in resurrection and with him and God for eternity. If you need any material on the New Testament church, just email me or write me and I will, I have a whole little outline of about four pages I will send to you of scriptures and thoughts because New Testament Christianity is not new. Precious memories and the precious words. Precious memory, new song compared to this. But this can be and may be new to you and allow you to be new in Christ. God be with you till we meet again.